Hey guys, welcome back. It's Movie Rat Matt, and this week I saw The Fate of the Furious. And this week I was going to shoot the review from my car to kind of give it that more automotive feel, you know? I don't think there's anything that could really go wrong. And I'm never leaving again. Oh, let's just do the old thing. Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Movie Rat Matt, and this week I saw the brand new one, The Fate of the Furious, which is the eighth movie in the Fast and Furious franchise. It's directed by F. Gary Gray this time, who did Italian Job back in the day. He just did Straight Outta Compton. It's two hours and 16 minutes long. Let's check it out and see how it is. The Good. This series shows no signs of slowing down, which for the eighth installment is pretty impressive. It's got everything you love from the other films. Broom, boom, and doom. Not gonna lie, pretty happy when I came up with that. Broom wise, you have a billion cars, a ton of racing, a lot of time inside the cars, doing crazy stunts we haven't seen before, plus a bunch of other amazing vehicles that are awesome. <laughs> Boom wise, I think there's more exploding, flying, on fire, crazy flipping cars than I've ever seen in any movie ever. <laughs> Doom wise, one of the only ways to really base these characters in reality is to give them a sense of mortality, and so they do kill one of the characters from the franchise. Hold on! Spoiler, it's not Paul Walker. And there's a ton of other awesome new stuff. Michelle Rodriguez playing a female. Submarines. Charlize Theron flying the plane from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And the wild thing from Game of Thrones. They also do a great job of trying to tie in the last three movies because I don't think anybody's seen all eight. They got crazy inventive with the action and fight sequences in this movie. Cars jumping off submarines and there's explosions and cars are flipping and there's missiles flying and we're in a field of ice while there's this guy on the hill trying to snipe one of the girls in the car and these two guys are trying to hijack the plane and save a baby to stop a nuclear blast. This is a scene in this movie. What? I don't even know how you storyboard that. Also, there's a the cool stuff where it's raining cars and Vin Diesel looks cool with a big chainsaw thing. If you can embrace the fun, crazy absurdity in this film, buckle up and enjoy. <laughs> oh, there's bad. If this movie taught me anything, it's that the only thing more important than family is family and respect and respect for family and also family. It didn't teach me anything. And we learned from the trailers that this movie hinges on the fact that Dom betrays his team. Who does he betray his team for? Charlize Theron, who was dressed like Angelina Jolie from Gone in 60 Seconds. She's blonde, she's got the dreads, all the same thing. What's her name? Cypher, the name of the person who betrayed the team in The Matrix. It's a 90s remake of a remake because they ran out of their ideas because unless the cars are going boom, they don't know what to write. Besides the fact that Charlize Theron's character is a ripoff of a ripoff, we have no idea what her motivation is to be a villain. Not for money, cars, power, like maybe because like I want countries to know they shouldn't cross me. But why, if you can break into a top secret facility and concussion grenade everybody who's trying to get after you and not kill them to steal a little computer thing and then jam, why do you need a street racer named Dom who can't buy sleeves for his shirt? Why do you even need this guy to do what you're doing? You're already doing it. There's not one reason why she actually needs Dom. Seriously, if you think about anything in this movie for more than three seconds, you're gonna find a flaw. How did the submarine get into the water in like five minutes? Super fun fact about every car made after 2000 that can be driven by computers apparently. The Jason Statham death scene has so many plot holes, this review would be 20 minutes long. The submarine gate was 10 minutes away, but you're driving 150 miles an hour for 25 minutes. How does that even work? So you're this amazing, unstoppable, ridiculous villain who can manipulate people and hack anything in the world and you have all the weapons you need and you're stopped by a Cuban moving van? The weird like hybrid reality they are going for is so ridiculous you can't care about anything. There could be a barbecue at the end of the movie and a through line besides naming the baby. Cars that go broom and explosions, that's what this is. All right, there you go. Just because the movie has a lot of explosions doesn't mean you have to see it in a theater. It doesn't make it a good movie. They're getting so ridiculous. The next one's probably gonna be in space. So subscribe and I'll talk to you guys later. So if Dom and Letty have the kid, who's the father?